Frontier Podcast, a weekly show where the two of us discuss the latest news and trends and everything going on in the gaming industry. Today won't be an exception, so we will be jumping right in into the first discussion of this show, which uh, if, which revolves around a game we are both playing and enjoying oh. called Juka Lele. Cool. So as you guys may already know, if you're watching this, it's like you already know, Juka Lele is the spiritual successor to a childhood franchise for, uh, for us called Banjo Kazooie. And Banjo Tui, the, the, the sequel for that, back on the N64, back on 1997. Right. And uh, in 2000. Yeah. Right. I think so. I, if I'm not mistaken with the dates, but around, around those years. So, uh, both of those games are some of our favorite games of all time. We love both of those games. Some um, great childhood memories, a lot of nostalgia going in there. So, they recently, uh, the team behind these games left their old company, Rare, form a new studio called Playtonic Games to make, to kickstart. Uh, a game uh, that's basically a banjo kazooie with a different skin, a different character, uh, different wars, and all that stuff. But it's essentially a spiritual successor to banjo kazooie. It follows the same formula, the same design principles and elements as banjo kazooie. Uh, so, very successful Kickstarter, one of the most successful Kickstarters ever made. And the game is finally in our hands, and we have been playing a bit of it. So, I want to just uh, talk briefly about our first impressions. All right. A brief discussion about what's going on with the game. So we both play for what, like an hour, a bit more than uh, an hour. Yeah, about close to two, two hours, hours, maybe. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. I think you too. Yeah. So what? Uh, I'm going to first with you. What were your first thoughts when you jumped into the intro to the intro of the game and subsequently the first level, the first world of the game? What do you think about when you just got into that? It's it's a oh man, you can it's such a, such a special game in terms of how nostalgic it feels. The very first moment you pop up the game, you 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 know you enter the main menu and the main menu has this uh, like subdivisions of things that you can go to or, or, mm -hmm. or you know uh, subsections of the menu, which are the campaign or the main story, uh, the multiplayer aspects of it, yeah. uh, the Rex uh, Rex drops Rex Rex Rextro Rex 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 uh, mini games, uh, options and whatnot, yeah. and exit or whatever. And they are arranged in the very same way that uh, Kasui and Tui were arranged on, and yeah. with the very same, you know, everything about ukulele feels like, you know, that like that uh, yeah evolution of, of 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 the banjo series, and that's exactly what I wanted to see and mm -hmm. what I wanted to feel when I when I uh, you know first heard about ukulele back in, in, in early last year. Uh, two years ago, uh, whenever it was that they launched the Kickstarter campaign. Two years campaign. ago, I think it was. Yeah. Three years ago, Jesus, time two flies. Two years, I think. Two? I think so. I don't really re recall when the, the, the campaign started, but when it started and when it was announced and teased, I, I, that's what I wanted. That's what I, I, the exact thing that I wanted was to feel that Banjo uh, Kasui feeling mm -hmm. right, redundantly, right? Uh, and that's what I got, and I'm very happy with that. I'm absolutely am happy with it. Uh, I started the game, and you know, uh, I'm not gonna spoil it for you guys, but everything, you know, the the dialogues, the the writing of the game, the music, the the environment, everything feels like a 3D platformer from the 90s or early thousands, 2000s. Uh, I agree, 100. Yeah. And and that's what I wanted again. And and for that, for some people, that's not gonna be. Uh, you know, if you look at it on the on the void, if you see it just as a game, it might feel feel a, a bit clunky. It might feel a bit off because of you know today's standards for for platformers and today's standards for games in general. It might feel a little old. It might feel a little odd. I don't want to say mm -hmm. unpolished or any anything like that. It just feels old. But I think that's intentional. I think that's what uh, the guys at Playtonic wanted it uh, people to feel when they play the game. And they absolutely made it. And for me, for someone that was expecting that, and for someone that wanted that, you know, throwback to the old uh, era of gaming, the golden age of, of 3D platformers, that's that that that's what I wanted. Again, that was exactly what I was looking for. I got it, and I'm very happy with the results. Uh, now, granted, I I've only played the you know the main hub a little bit, and then. Uh, a little bit on the first world or the first tome or the first or whatever they're calling it yeah uh so it's a little early to tell you know if 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 the experience is going to be lengthy enough for you to 
uh, really get to enjoy it, right? Because something, you know, there was this one thing about uh, Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie was that it, they felt like very long games, right? Yeah. Very elongated in, in, in terms of, of play time. You could spend days and days and days playing these games and maybe the game itself didn't really took that long but you know back then when you first played them and you had nothing there was no internet there was no you know tutorials or yeah. anything of the sort and you played these games you struggled with finding all the the, the musical notes or all the the, the yeah the jiggies or all yeah. the, the everything everything was a mystery that you needed to solve and i don't know if in today's age people are gonna get as much of a thrill with the game it's mm -hmm. still too early to say uh but in terms of the feeling, in terms of, of how it feels playing the game, I think it feels great. Definitely. I think this is a, this is definitely a love letter for Banjo Kazooie fans. Yeah. In every single sense, in every single way. I don't think this game would be much of an enjoyment for people who are not Banjo Kazooie fans. Because it, it's definitely a very... It feels in many ways like an old game. Like it feels... It, it definitely has design elements from the 90s. Right. And that can definitely be a bad thing for people who are just way too used now to modern gaming, to modern shooters, to modern to modern experiences. But for people, if, if you're looking for a Banjo Kazooie experience, if you're looking for a Banjo Kazooie game, this is the game you're looking for. This is the Banjo Kazooie game we've been waiting for, I think. So just judging from what I played, this is. What at the least what I as a Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tui fan wanted to to play because I re even uh, even even nostalgia wise I mean I just played Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tui on the Red Replay Collection just a few months ago and this this game feels very authentic to that experience also it looks it looks amazing it looks beautiful it's a beautiful game to look at uh, yeah, it's, it's very yeah, cartoony but right. very, it's very colorful and it's uh, and it's it stands up it, it just shines in every single corner of the game it it looks like a night platformer made made modern uh also what i really want to um to highlight is the music like yeah. oh my god like uh, grand Kirkhope just <laughs> just did an amazing job with the music of this game and what i mean uh if you're not looking at the game and you're just walking by and listening and you, you just pass by the tv or whatever and you listen to the game being played you think of banjo kazooie like you're like oh my god is that banjo kazooie no it's ukulele it, it it just st strikes every single note correctly. It feels like a Banjo Kazooie game. And every time I was playing this and listening to the music, I was smiling. I was brought back to my childhood and I was just smiling, smiling at how beautiful it was. It's 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 great. The music is great. Also the grinding, man. Oh my god, yeah. the grinding. The grinding the, the humor of, of, of Layla, specifically Layla, I yeah. think they really, really um Nailed just it. nailed yeah. the personality of Kasui in Lele. It's phenomenal. <laughs> the jokes that Lele makes and how Lele just makes fun and is very aggressive <laughs> to, many, to many people, sarcastic and, yeah, to yeah, many yeah. of the NPCs in the game. <laughs> the jokes of the piggy character just having a name related to fatness or yeah. food. <laughs> the jokeness with Rextra about how could could he survive the HDR of gaming? <laughs> that kind of stuff. But the way it's it's written makes it shine a lot. Yeah. So it's it, this is definitely a game full of personality. Again, I'm not sure that people would really that people who are not Banjo Kazooie fans will really enjoy it, uh, as, as especially as much as we do. But if you if you uh, if you were a gamer on the N64 and PS1 era, if you were a gamer uh, of this old classic 3d performance if you enjoy banjo kazooie this is a game that you should definitely definitely check out and pick up it's 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 uh so far from the, what, what i've played can not have much time to really play it as much as i wanted but wh from what i played it's very good it, it's it's great um it has a drawback as well it has uh, some criticism going on uh me personally i had a lot of problems with uh the first rextra minigame the minigame that is on the first world called cartus Karthik, i think was the name I hated the minigame. Mm -hmm. I think the controls are very, very bad, and uh, it's very frustrating and unfair. Uh, but you have to beat it to get some pages, two pages, in fact, from the minigame, and that sucked. Mm -hmm. That sucked. But I had to do it because I wanted to hundred percent the game, and I didn't enjoy it. Like when I every single like, all the whole time I was playing the minigame, I wasn't having fun. I wasn't enjoying it. It was a chore to do, 
and that sucks, yeah. right? It's I don't get I don't get why it's here, and the idea of mini games is very nice. But you can see my YouTube did it very well, I think. Uh, but this one, ugh, I don't know. It's it's I'm not. I'm not getting it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not liking. I hope. I hope the next mini games on other worlds are better, but this one so far, I don't think so. But that that's basically the only thing outside of of, of Rexdrow's arcade. Everything has been perfect. perfect. All right. Yeah, and it's it's worth mentioning as well that this is a game that you know came from a Kickstarter campaign, right? A successful Kickstarter campaign, uh, and the no was it? Yeah, it was successful and. The, you know it reaches goal in like 30 minutes yeah or all right less. yeah it, it really <laughs> overshoot what you know what yeah, it wanted to make absolutely. Uh, By versus far. what it got By uh, far. and uh you know taking that into account and seeing previous games that and i'm not trying to you know throw dirt or stones at anyone here but seeing other games that were kickstarted successfully and that made it to fruition and and you know looking at that at those games and how those games move made right yeah. a, a critically acclaimed and uh, or critically rather uh and financially and there's a huge difference right i mean ukulele it's not critically wise it's not uh a game with tens or nines it's not a, a huge financial success or anything like that but it's a very good game it's a game that it's i i guess financially i don't have the numbers but i i don't think it's doing bad i, th I think it's really great i think so yeah and you know, I hope when, so. When you, yeah, yeah, hopefully, and when you contrast that with things like Mighty Number no. Nine or with games like um, what was another failure with uh, Kickstarter? Mm. No Man's mm. Sky was a Kickstarter game. I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure there's another one that you know that really stands out. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just going back to Mighty Number no. One. No. No, nine. Sorry, <laughs> uh, you know. The, the amount of, 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 of flaws that that game had had nothing to do in comparison to ukulele and the amount of flaws that this game has, right? Uh, even we're arguing that some of those flaws might even be intentional, that they might be by design that they are done that way. The controllers, the camera, the, the et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, there are some flaws with the mini games and that's, that's all right, but it's nowhere compared to other Kickstarter games that are out there already and that didn't really... Uh, successfully embraced or successfully delivered what people wanted from from them and in ukulele's case i think it's the the entire opposite right they delivered exactly what the people that back the game wanted, wanted. Yeah. and it so happens that that thing that those people that back the game up the thing that they wanted is not something that some other groups of players or gamers really were interested on right the 3d platformer nostalgic 90s era type of gaming right that's what the critics been about about you know the controllers feel clunky the 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 essence of how the game works it's a little weird and all of these things are things that are the way they are because probably they were designed to feel like that because that's how people you know the games were back then and and so they are you know they are making it they're making this game for those backers that wanted that experience rather than for the yeah. Entire Mass population, market, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so I think that's commendable. That's that's uh, something Definitely. to take into account when you know thinking of ukulele as a game that started as a Kickstarter campaign that went successful, right? It's a game for a specific audience. Yeah. And it's a game that that specific audience would definitely love, yeah. love the hell out of it. Everyone else, ah, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Right. Uh, and we are definitely seeing that on the reviews. Right. Because many people, many people who are not that audience are reviewing the game. That's why it's getting not so great scores. But I think everyone who enjoys this kind of 3D platform from the 90s would love to And that's perfectly ukulele. fine, right? I mean, Absolutely. not every game has to appeal to every exactly. every segment of the exactly. market. So it's, it's, it's just fine. 100%, yeah. So if you believe this this, this kind of game uh, fits your style, definitely, definitely check it out. Support these guys because they're making... Uh, they're giving uh, people what they wanted for years even more than a decade yeah right since I we agree. wanted a sequel to banjo 3 so that's that's great banjo can say nuts and balls don't talk about it don't talk mm. about it <laughs> so what 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 game what which one? banjo 3 what? banjo banjo 3 the game that never happened is it, is it on, on development no it never <laughs> happened it was cancelled yeah, that, that was one of the saddest things right to ever happen in gaming <laughs> having banjo i still i still have my now that you touch on that and and granted that we we have we are very rare-esque after playing uh, Sea of Thieves this last weekend, yeah. uh, 
uh, I still have hope and, and uh, uh, you know, Hope, I guess, is the the best word of, of, of you know for using in this case uh, that Banjo Three might still one day make its way out into the open with rare recharge and doing games mm -hmm. that are games and not connect stuff anymore. Yeah. And you know, I don't think it's going to be soon. I don't necessarily think that it's going to happen this year, or next year, or, or the year after that. But I I think that Rare is now in a position where they can say, you know what, I'm we're going to take some of those franchises that people love and going to do something that people yeah. want. Yeah. Right, so uh, uh, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for uh, Banjo Three in the nearish future. Maybe not so recent because yeah. ukulele, it's it's right. way too much of a com you know of a of a already uh, yeah. yes of competition in, in that regard. But I do see a Banjo Three somewhere and sometime in the future. I, I really, really, really want to uh, just for Gemini theme. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really you, want that. Yeah. I, th mm -hmm. I think it's like, I think just for Gemini is the kind of game that. Can uh, is one of the is one of rare franchises that can appeal, I think, to the widest market possible because of its uh, of its violence, of its shooting mechanics, of its craziness. In that sense, I think it's a game that, that if modernized, it can be very appealing to a big audience, and it's very different in many ways as well. Yeah. So I really, really want the Jet for Gemini two or reboot or whatever, right? I really mm -hmm. want that. I hope that it happens soon. That would be great.